Hi everyone, my name is Eric Marcy and I'm a day two engineer with Time to Market. And today I'll be showing you how to migrate from Link 2013 or Skype for Business 2015 to Skype for Business Server 2019. Just as a public service announcement, the content of this presentation is provided without warranty. The agenda for this video series will be broken off into three main parts. The first part will be the introduction, which will include a little bit about me, the purpose of the video series, and an overview of the lab environment, and also the planning and prerequisite stage in the migration. Part two will include the migration procedure and cleanup, and then part three will include testing and verification and a final review. So let's go ahead and begin with the introduction. A bit about me. So I'm from Barberton, Ohio, and I'm a day two engineer at Time to Market, along with being a full-time student at the University of Akron. Recently in April 2019, I passed my MCSC Productivity Solutions certification and my MCSA Office 365 certification. IT overall has been a lifelong passion and hobby for me. In my free time, I like building new, uh, building upon new technologies, playing with Office 365, building new servers, etc. And my UC interest really took off in early 2016. The company I worked for had a migration from a Toshiba phone system to Skype for Business. And later that day that we actually had the migration, I came home and I started building my first uh, Skype business server and really started reading into how the technology worked. And later that year, in April 2016, the Cleveland chapter of the Skype for Business user group began. Um, and that has been actually a really beneficial way to interact with the community and you know learn new things that are happening inside the Microsoft UC world. The purpose of this video series is to allow you to learn what is new, what has changed, and what is coming soon to Skype for Business Server 2019. I also want you to be able to determine what is required and how to migrate your environment to Skype for Business Server 2019. Along the way, I hope to also teach a few best practices. So when we look at the lab environment, we need to see exactly what we are dealing with. So this lab environment consists of a standard edition Link 2013 pool that has the persistent chat role, a few users homed in it, the central management store. It is also the exchange integration node to exchange 2013, and it is also home to the response groups. There's also a standard edition Skype for Business 2015 pool that has persistent chat and a few users assigned to it. There's also a 2019 pool, which is what we're going to eventually move most of the roles to. And then we also have an Exchange 2013 and 2016 server. We have a demand controller with a CA role that has a SHA-256 CA. And then we also have a standalone CA that is based off a SHA-1 certificate. Uh, we also have an AnyNode SBC. Now, the reason why we have a CA that actually has a SHA-1 certificate is back in the days of Link 2013, uh, the default for a certificate authority was actually SHA-1. Uh, in today's world, we need to move away from that SHA-1 CA and make sure that we are using a SHA-256 CA. When we look at the end goal of the migration, we need to know what we are trying to achieve. So the end of this migration, we're going to actually retain the Skype for Business Server 2015 pool. And this is due to it having the persistent chat service. The persistent chat role has actually been removed from Skype for Business Server 2019. So if the organization wants to retain persistent chat, you will need to keep one of those 2015 pools around. If the organization does not need persistent chat, you will no longer need that 2015 pool. And then we have our brand new Skype for Business Server 2019 pool that is now going to be the central management store for the environment. It'll also be the Exchange integration node to Exchange 2016, along with having all the users and response groups homed on it. We are going to be keeping the Exchange 2016 server, but eliminating the Exchange 2013 server. We are also going to be keeping the domain control that has the SHA-256 CA role um, and also retain the AnyNode SBC. In total, this environment, we're eliminating three servers. However, if you don't need persistent chat, we can eliminate four servers. When we look at the lab environment topology, we can see here that we have our SHA-256 CA role co-located on our domain controller. We have a SHA-1 CA, and we also have our SBC uh, that has a SIP trunk to Twilio. We have our two exchange servers, and then we also have our Link 2013 pool, Skype for Business 2015 pool, and Skype for Business 2019 pool. We also have 
four users in this environment. One is assigned to the 2013 environment, one is assigned to the Skype for Business Server 2015 environment, and two are assigned to the Skype for Business 2019 environment. These are all connected together via a PoE switch that connects to a PFSense firewall for internet access. Let's begin the planning and prerequisites phase. Before we begin the migration, we need to evaluate your environment. The first big thing is that we need to find out how many users are currently enabled for Skype for Business in that environment. Chances are that since the environment was first put in in 2013 or 2015, the company has grown in the amount of employees that it has. If the amount of employees exceeds the number that is permissible on each front end pool, uh, we will need to also look into building more front ends or an additional pool uh, to home those users. We also need to find out how many pools are currently in use, whether it's one a single front end pool, whether it's two or even 10. Um, we need to find out those pools are standard or enterprise edition and what version those two pools are. We also need to find out if we're running Exchange on-prem or on Office 365. This is actually critical as if we have Exchange on-prem, we're going to keep our auto tenants and we're going to keep our voicemail on-prem. However, if we're in Office 365, that's going to be put into the cloud. However, in February 2020, Exchange uh, Unified Messaging will be removed from Office 365 and we will need to look into using uh, cloud voicemail and cloud auto attendance for our Skype for Business environment. We also need to find out if persistent chat is required in the environment. Um, this is actually critical as the persistent chat role was removed from Skype for Business Server 2019. And if it is still required, we are going to go ahead and have to retain a 2015 pool to retain that persistent chat uh, functionality in the environment. What Microsoft wants you to do is actually start beginning to use Microsoft Teams for the Teams chat instead of using persistent chat on-prem. Um, so the next part is actually, plan, uh, is the organization planning on migrating to Teams or keeping Skype for Business on-prem? So if the organization is planning on migrating to Teams, there should not really be a reason to migrate to uh, Skype for Business Server 2019. If you're running 2015 on-prem and you're running at least CU8, we're actually at CU10 now, you do not need to upgrade to Skype for Business Server 2019 to migrate to Teams. You can keep that 2015 environment and just use that and go directly to Teams from there. Next, we need to understand why we would want to migrate to Skype for Business Server 2019. So one of the big ones is server supportability. So Link Server 2013's mainstream support end date was April 10, 2018, and the extended support date is not until April 11, 2023. What this means for organizations running Link Server 2013 is that there will be no new features added to the product uh, any longer. Now, if you're running Skype for Business Server 2015, that mainstream support end date is not until October 13, 2020. So we're just a little bit over a year away from that mainstream support ending. After that point, it will be post, uh, put onto extended support, which will not be until October 14, 2025 that, that that will expire. Now. Skype for Business Server 2015 is still getting new functionality, new features every little bit with a new CU, but keep in mind that we're almost a year away from that pretty much ending for Skype for Business Server 2015. So if you plan on staying on-prem for a while, Skype for Business Server 2019's uh, mainstream end support end date is not until uh, January 9, 2024, and the extended support day is not until, again, October 14, 2025. And so big thing to look at is server supportability. Another big thing is actually new features that are coming to Skype for Business and actually have already started becoming a part of Skype for Business Server 2019. Now, the first big one is an HTML5 base control panel. It is very similar to the Office 365 Admin Center, and you can see a screenshot there to the right. Currently, it's in preview, and only the functionality for enabling users and changing user settings is currently available, but more functionality will be added as time goes on. Now, the Silverlight control panel will still stay around. However, uh, due to the fact that the new modern control panel will not have the same functionality and feature set as the Silverlight based control panel. Additionally, we have a high availability and disaster recovery in the response group service. Um, so the current process with uh, Link 2013 or Skype for Business Server 2015 environment is that the process was done manually. Now we have an actual service that will replicate those response groups 
Um, so in the event of a pool failure, we can automatically begin using those response groups on another pool with no manual process. Additionally, we have support uh, for cloud call queues and also CIFA util is now native within Skype for Business Server. Additionally, uh, another reason to migrate would be a migration to Teams. So if you're running Link 2013, you need to look at upgrading at least Skype for Business 2015 CU8 or higher in Server 2019. Um, there's actually a program from Microsoft called Fast Track that any, any customer can use, and it allows you to have access to Microsoft experts and resources to assist with your organization migrating to Teams. Um, but if you're not moving to Teams, you still look at you know the features that are coming that are actually here now with CU1 and Skype for Business Server 2019. A bit more on why migrate, and this is more or less my opinion. If you're running Skype for Business Server 2015 CU8 Plus on prem, and your organization plans to move to the cloud, do not migrate. The new features do not justify migration. There is really no reason to migrate to 2019 if your goal is to end up in Teams in the cloud. Now, on the other hand, if you are running Skype for Business Server 2015 on-prem and your organization plans to stay on-prem for the foreseeable future, upgrade to Skype for Business Server 2019. Now, one thing to take into account is whether the feature changes affect your organization. That will actually be covered on our next uh, slide. This is also key if we want our organization to retain the investment in the existing infrastructure that we've already built and spent a lot of money on. We need to also look at what has changed in Skype for Business Server 2018 to ensure that the features that are part of the product still meet the needs of the business in which we are working on this migration for. So we need to first look at what has been deprecated in Skype for Business Server 2018. Uh, one of the first things is XMPP gateways. So there is no longer integration with other chat clients, such as Cisco Jabber or others. Uh, persistent chat has been removed. Uh, now, if you want to retain persistent chat, you can interop with the 2015 uh, front end pool and the persistent chat service can be brought over to the 2019 pool from that 2015 pool, even if the users are homed in the 2019 pool. Uh, SQL mirroring was also removed. So enterprise edition of SQL Server is now a requirement for SQL always on. Uh, you can no longer use uh, SQL mirroring with a standard edition part of SQL. Um, so there is going to be an additional licensing cost when it comes to licensing SQL enterprise versus standard. Additionally, in-place upgrades have been removed. Uh, so you must build a brand new standard edition or enterprise edition pool. Um, back with Link 2013 to 2015 migrations, there was actually uh, the ability to upgrade directly to Skype for Business Server 2015. This no longer exists within Skype for Business Server 2018 to ensure that you know, DNS records are correct, to ensure that the servers being rebuilt don't have any type of legacy components that are part of the old systems on it, and overall just gives you a better environment for building the new uh, server on. Additionally, uh, the mobility service or MCX has been uh, removed, so you can no longer connect using a client that uses MCX um, instead of the UCWA uh, API. Additionally, uh, you must use a certificate from a SHA-256 CA. Um, one of the first things actually is that web browsers will show a certificate error if you try using a SHA-1 CA, um, a certificate from a SHA-1 CA. And this, additionally, a link phone edition devices, even on the newest firmware, will not be able to connect. Um, so as soon as I upgraded the 2015 pool even to CU8, um, or even the 2018 pool, those devices would not connect to Skype for, to Skype for Business any longer unless it was using a SHA-256 certificate. Um, so that was actually a bit of a personal discovery that I had I found when building this presentation. More changes uh, is actually more on the hardware capacity side. So when you look at uh, the hardware, a 2019 front end server uh, no longer is 32 gigs of RAM as a minimum requirement, it is now 64 gigs of RAM. Now with that, the maximum number of front ends per pool has increased from 12 to 16 front ends. Additionally, there is a maximum number of users if, uh, increase from a pool from 80,000 to 106,000 based off those new front ends being added to the pool. Additionally, there have been some performance improvements, uh, such as CPU usage being decreased by roughly 40% under the same load and user model of the current environment. So some new features in Skype for Business Server 2018. 
Um, in addition to the features mentioned previously, we also now have uh, changes with cloud voicemail. So Exchange UM will be removed um, from Office 365, and it has already been removed from Exchange Server 2019. Um, this will happen roughly around February 2020 with the Office 365 portion. And if unified messaging is required, Exchange 2013 or 2016 needs to be retained or built on-prem. Um, additionally, uh, Link Server 2013 and Skype for Business Server 2015-19 will be automatically migrated to Cloud Voicemail. So a hybrid topology is required for the voicemail service. So you will need to sign into Office 365, make sure you have Azure AD Connect for that Cloud Voicemail service to continue working. It also will need uh, licenses for uh, the users in Office 365. Um, a early uh, migration opt-in began in May 2019, where you can have your tenant upgrade to cloud voicemail. Um, so this has already began rolling out. Uh, it was currently uh, at the beginning of August, so that has been out for quite some time. Um, now, cloud voicemail does not currently support uh, PSTN dial-in access, so you can no longer dial directly in to, you know, find out, you know, your voicemail, find out what's on your calendar. That does not exist with cloud voicemail. Additionally, there's no longer a play message on phone with uh, over the PSTN uh, functionality. So before you could actually right click a voicemail and have your phone call you to play that voicemail that does not exist. Um, there's actually a lot more and there's a link here on the screen that will take you to a full list to show you what all currently does not work with cloud voicemail. Um, another big feature is uh, call monitoring with the call data connector. So Previously, we've had our on-prem um, monitoring server, we had our call quality dashboard, and that was all on-prem. It was kind of separate from our Skype for Business Online users, and we had two different dashboards. It was all over the place. Now, with Skype for Business Server 2018, we can actually send that data directly to the cloud, and from within the Microsoft Teams Admin Center, actually see a single dashboard for all the calls, whether they are on-prem, in Skype for Business Online, or in Microsoft Teams. This concludes part one of this video series. In part two, we will be covering the migration process with a live demo and cleanup after the migration is done. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.